Welcome back to The Ed Show. The Republican war on workers, it just continues. And as we've reported once before, uh, one of the latest targets is, of all things, the post office, an American institution. The post office is in a little bit of trouble, but they can get out of it. Republicans say a decline in traditional mail has been a big reason why the post office is losing money. Eh, but it's more than that. During a 2006 lame duck session of Congress, Republicans passed a law requiring the Postal Service to pre-fund, pre-fund, that means ahead of schedule, health care benefits for future retirees, 75 years worth of pensions over a 10-year span. Now, what kind of business would sign up for a plan like that? If you run a small business, can you ask yourself the honest question tonight, would you do that? Probably not. Republicans have one goal in mind when it comes to the post office. Privatization. Here are the facts. The post office costs taxpayers nothing. That's right. Zip. Zero. Nada. Nothing. It doesn't add to the deficit. But because it's considering a, it's, it's basically considered a quasi-government agency, the GOP, well, they just want to take the axe to it. They don't want any obligations. Senator Bernie Sanders has come up with a plan to not only save the American institution, but he's got some creative ideas. He's thought of a few creative solutions to expand the Postal Service's existing services, like this. Under Senator Sanders' plan, you can get a few cool ones delivered right to your doorstep. Now, right now, you have to go through the private sector to do that. But why can't the post office do this? Sounds pretty good to me. Joining me now is Senator Sanders of Vermont. Senator, good to have you with us. I'm sorry I didn't pick the Vermont beer that's up there, but at least, <laughs> at least I've got the good union stuff here, Miller Lite. Okay. okay. Is the beer delivery and some other things a way that could really turn around the Postal Service? What are you proposing? I'm Ed, absolutely. The post office today is extraordinarily restricted in the kind of services and products that it can provide. If you go into a post office and you say to the clerk, can you notarize this letter for me? Post office clerk says, it's against the law, can't do it. Can I get 10 copies of my, sorry, can't do that. Can I get a fishing license, hunting license, can't do that. If I want at Christmas time, can you wrap my package, put some Christmas wrapping on it, can't do that. All over Europe, what post offices are doing is significantly diversifying. They're getting involved in e-telecommunications, uh, uh, and they're beginning to make some revenue. So we've got to do a couple of things. Short term, as you've indicated, we've got to relieve the post office of this horrendously onerous responsibility of coming up with five and a half billion dollars every single year. No other institution in government, local, state, federal, or private agency, private corporation has to do that. Second of all, the Postal Service, everybody agrees, has overpaid about 13 billion dollars into various retirement programs. That will give us short-term breathing space in order to get a new business model out there which allows the post office to get involved in a much more entrepreneurial effort and begin to raise the revenue it needs to be self-sufficient. Now, all of the things that have been brought up about email and the way society changes goods and services and whatnot, I understand all that. But had the Republicans not had done this pre-funding of 75 years in a 10-year window, they wouldn't have anywhere near the financial problems they have right now, correct? Absolutely. Okay. And, here's, and here's the point, Ed. That fund now has $44 billion. What the Inspector General of the Post Office has just told us the other day, if the Post Office does not put another nickel into that fund, it accumulates 4% interest. In 21 years, that fund is fully funded, stronger than any similar fund in the United States of America. So we should use that $5.5 in order to stabilize and the Post Office today. How are you going to get the private sector to go to rural America? How are you going to get the private sector to go help small businesses? I mean, in the long run, this is really a, 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 a real thorn in the side of American business, I think. You're absolutely right, Ed. Look, this is what we're talking about. You're talking about 230,000 jobs being lost in the Postal Service in the middle of recession. Postal Service is responsible for millions of other jobs in the private sector. Businesses who use the mail have to use the mail packages every single day. We're talking about losing 3,700 post offices, many of them rural. We're talking about if these guys get their way, 
of slowing down mail delivery so that instead of one day delivery, it may be two, it may be three, instead of three, it may be five. If you do that, in my view, and in the view of many yeah. experts, you're talking about a death spiral, the end of the Postal Service as we know it. What, if, your, go ahead. what I find so amazing about this politically is that there are a lot of Republican legislators from rural America. When they go home, aren't they going to get an earful? What happened to my post office? Did you really have to do that? And then they say, well, the union people, and they just make it too much money, and they can't make any money. Wrong. The Republicans in the lame duck session of the Congress passed a law and put them in an untenable, untenable position financially that has caused all of this. And you're coming back with a business plan that wants to diversify the services of the post office to make them more competitive. That's what they're doing in other countries. But, of course, we have to do the American way. We have to cut jobs and move forward. Are you going to get any bipartisan support on this, Senator? I believe, I believe we will. We're picking up a whole lot of Democratic support. There's a bill out there, Leave them in Coffer bill has some good aspects to it. We've got to strengthen it. I've got at least 20, 25 senators, Democrats, who want to see it strengthened. I think there are a number of Republicans, just for the reason that you gave. When senators go home and they go to rural areas, people understand that a post office is not just the post office. It's an integral part of what a small community is. They don't want to lose those post offices. Yeah. Senator Bernie Sanders, great to have you with us. Thank you for sticking up for what's right in this country, no doubt about it. Sean Hannity has some pretty wild claims about the death of Osama bin Laden, the number one terrorist in the world. I'll explain the truth to Sean, my tape, next.